for the past two years, state governments, with the assistance of the federal government, sadly, have imposed many regulations and restrictions in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. These measures have eroded our freedoms, our human rights and our civil rights. Such infringements on our rights were introduced under the guise of public safety, but the oft-cited health advice on which they were allegedly based has never been held up for public scrutiny. States have introduced draconian measures such as border closures uh, without having the validity of such a measure tested in court. Uh, governments have prevented doctors from prescribing medicines that were safe and effective with a long history of safe use. Governments have mandated and coerced Australians into undertaking a medical procedure that does not have long-term safety data. Substances that people are forced to inject into their body out of fear of losing their job are produced by big pharma companies that are getting, getting very rich off these mandates while bearing no responsibility for any of the harm that their products may cause, thanks to an indemnity granted by the government. We already know some of the harmful effects, but we don't know all of them because there is no long-term safety data. But there's always going to be a section of the Australian community that was either hesitant or totally opposed to these provisionally approved inoculations for whatever reason. But the mainstream media is kidding themselves when they seek to demonise all pro-freedom people with the anti-vaxxer slur. There were tens of thousands of protesters on the lawns of Parliament this Saturday. Uh, they were not all anti-vaxxers. Most of them were actually fully inoculated, uh, I'd say, many of them, but uh, they were anti-mandate. They were hard-working people, many of them there, who lost their jo jobs due to workplace vaccine mandates, but they were opposed to the discriminatory measures that are locking ordinary Australians out of polite society as well. Locked out of cafes, locked out of restaurants, locked out of theatres, out of sporting venues, even locked out of hospitals. They are sick of being forced to comply with measures that just make no sense. In my home state, we've got mask mandates. We have vaccine mandates uh, in the form of, of no jab, no job uh, uh, policies. We've even had borders closed to people who weren't vaccinated. But still, the Omicron variant crossed the border uh, from the vaccinated, swept through the state, the vaccinated caught the disease, the vaccinated passed on the disease, the vaccinated went to hospital with the disease, and the vaccinated sadly died with the disease. Now, ordinary Australians look at this data and ask the obvious question, why are we still pretending that masks, QR codes, vaccinations, lockouts, lockdowns and discrimination can stop the spread? But the mainstream media has failed to actually ask that question. But it is a question that we can ask and it should be asked. As the pandemic transitions to the endemic phase, we need a Royal Commission to find out not only how we got into this situation, but uh, why it, we arrived there and who is responsible. The devastating impacts of the pandemic response on millions of Australians cannot just be swept under the rug. To gloss over the tyranny the rise of tyranny and the rise of authoritarianism in this country would only further embolden those who seek to coerce and control the Australian people. If we fail to examine how and why we were stripped of rights and freedoms, we fail to learn the lessons of history and we will be doomed to repeat them at the next pandemic or the next opportunity to induce fear and then tyranny amongst the populace. That's why I have called for a Royal Commission uh, or an inquiry, a commission of inquiry, for instance, with similar sufficient powers to fully investigate the pandemic response from all levels of government, federal, state, local, public service institutions, departments, agencies. Uh, and I'm asking people who believe in freedom, who believe in human rights, uh, who believe that there was wrong that was done over the course of this pandemic to get on board this. I've got a petition, georgechristensen.com.au forward slash inquiry. I'm also calling for a wide terms of reference in that to include all aspects of the pandemic response that have eroded our freedoms, our human rights, our civil rights, with lockdowns, border closures, mask mandates, vaccine efficacy and safety, vaccine passports, medical segregation and discrimination, transparency of medical advice, treatments and interference with GPs, misinformation and censorship, big tech and the freedom of speech issues, quarantine facilities, rules and operations, uh, restrictions on social gatherings such as weddings and funerals, access to hospitals and services, international travel and return, school closures, regulation enforcement, police overreach, PCR and rapid antigen tests, all of these issues. I urge anyone who's suffered under any instance of government overreach in the pandemic response to head to the website to support my call for a Royal Commission into the pandemic. 
Authorised by George Christensen, LMP Mackay.